my name is Robin Wong and I want to share some interesting facts that you may not know about the Olympus OMD cameras. I've shared a lot of tips and tricks on using the Olympus camera. I've also shared some photography tips and my experience using the Olympus OMD over the years. In this video, I want to talk about something different. Let's talk about the origin of the OMD and some of the interesting facts about the camera that some of you may not even know. Let's do this. Have you ever wondered what the word OMD stands for? The name is very important. That's why it is no mistake that Olympus named their product OMD. The word OMD carries a significant meaning for the company. O stands for Olympus, obviously. M stands for Maitani, which refers to Yoshihisa Maitani, the legendary Olympus engineer behind the successful cameras such as the OM series and the Pan series cameras back in the film days. In fact, the original OM SR film cameras from Olympus, such as the OM1 and OM2, they were named after the Maitani himself. Initially, Olympus wanted to name the film camera M1. It was no secret that another very, very famous German camera company already has an M1. I was talking about the Leica M series camera. There was already Leica M1, hence Olympus couldn't use the name M1, so they created the new OM series, the Olympus Maitani series. Now moving on to the digital micro four thirds system, Maitani's legacy lives on, hence the OMD, which is the Olympus Maitani Dash Digital System, OMD. If you're wondering what the EM stands for, for EM1, EM5, and EM10 series, E was a code name Evolt, which was also similarly used in the Olympus DSLRs in the earlier days, such as the E1, E3, E5, E520, and E30. All the Olympus 4 thirds DSLRs have the suffix E at the front of the name. Therefore, the E remains in the micro 4 thirds system with the addition of M. I don't really know honestly what the M stands for, but if you want me to guess, it could be mirrorless or micro four thirds. Therefore, OMD, which is Olympus Maitani Digital, and EM, which is Evolt Mirrorless or micro four thirds. I know that it is mouthful and I do admit that the naming is a little bit problematic. It is too long. If it was up to me, if I was the one who was in charge in naming the Olympus OMD cameras, I would have named them OMD1, OMD5, OMD10, OMD1 Mark II, OMD5 Mark II. Anyway, I have no authority and I have no say whatsoever in terms of product strategy. I am, after all, an external photographer. But hey, we do have amazing products from the OMD lineup and these are the names that Olympus is using, so we will just stay with them. And I do genuinely hope that you appreciate knowing the origin of the OMD. Interesting fact number two I'm sharing is that the image sensor in the Olympus cameras are not stationary when the camera is turned off. In fact, when you shake the camera, you can feel that there is something rattling inside the camera. Do not panic, do not be alarmed. It is just the image sensor that is freely moving inside the camera. And when you turn on the camera, that image sensor will be locked in place by the powerful magnets from the five axis image stabilization. The free floating image sensor in the camera, when it is not turned on, there's nothing to worry about it. Even if you just move the camera around, if you shake it, it will not damage the camera. I know this is cause for concern. I have a lot of friends or other photographers who have come to me and asked, hey Robin, there's something rattling inside my camera. Is my camera broken? It's just something I should be worried about. Don't worry, chill. That's perfectly normal. If you're wondering why I changed location, it suddenly rained heavily. This is Kuala Lumpur, it's a tropical country. The weather is unpredictable. One moment it was sunny and bright, the next it just rained without any warning. 
I'm sorry if I'm a little bit wet, but it is what it is. The shoot must go on. And I thought that a little bit of raindrops in the background of the audio will be very soothing and calming. Where were we? Yes, we were talking about the image sensor that was rattling around in the camera. Also, in some lenses with image stabilization built into them, the lenses, when it's not powered on, if you move the lens around, you will feel that there is something moving inside the lens as well. There is the floating element inside the lens which will be locked in position once it is powered on. This is true for some Panasonic lenses that have image stabilization built inside the lens. Full disclosure, I have not tried Olympus lenses. I don't have the 12 to 100 or the 300 4F Pro with me. If you have these lenses, do give them a little bit of shake and let us know in the comments below if you find anything rattling inside these lenses. Interesting fact number three. Behind the electronic viewfinder, there are some lenses. A lot of people, when they discuss about the electronic viewfinder quality, they only talk about the LCD or the OLED panel, how bright the panel is, how much resolution it packs in, what's the refresh rate, how is the performance, is there any lag? But not many people realize that it is not the LCD screen that we look at directly. Between our eyes and the EVF, there are layers and layers of optics. And yes, the quality of the optics used in front of the EVF also will affect the quality and viewing experience of the electronic viewfinder. The Panasonic G9 was famous for having pin cushion distortion when you look through the large viewfinder. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if there's any problem with optics. A high quality electronic viewfinder not only has high refresh rate, high resolution, accurate colors, and good dynamic range when you view through the electronic viewfinder, but a high quality optics will ensure how sharp and how comfortable the viewing experience is when we use and shoot with the camera's electronic viewfinder. Therefore, before buying a new camera, don't just look at Pepper's specification. Yes, the electronic viewfinder may have the highest resolution out there. It may have very fast refresh rate. The camera manufacturer may claim a lot of things, but the ultimate test is when you put the electronic viewfinder to your eye and when you actually look through it and see if the experience is pleasant and it is as smooth and as sharp as promised by the specifications. Olympus being the expert when it comes to optics and lenses, they do not chip out and do not compromise when they put in the design of the optics used for the electronic viewfinders for any Olympus OMB cameras. Interesting fact number four that you may not know, the raw file from Olympus cameras are actually compressed. Yes, Olympus cameras do not have uncompressed raw files. However, Olympus claims that the compression used in their raw files is actually lossless. One way to explain this is to compare against FLAC files. FLAC being the free lossless audio codec. And we compare a FLAC file against an MP3 file. The MP3 audio files are like JPEG files. They are compressed, they are lossy. It means that once we have compressed the file, it has lots of information which cannot be recovered anymore. However, Olympus employs a smart algorithm. I think it is a trade secret. Perhaps someone else who is smart enough can reverse engineer the compression algorithm. Olympus claims that the raw files uses lossless compression algorithm. This simply means that there is no loss of image quality due to compression. I cannot really tell you if this is true because I don't have an Olympus uncompressed RAW file to compare with the current compressed RAW file formats. However, those of you who have worked with Olympus RAW files before will agree with me that there are plenty of room to work with when we are post-processing with Olympus RAW files. Therefore, it is not a cause for concern when you found that, hey, the Olympus Pro file is actually a compressed format. If what Olympus claim is true, if the raw files are truly lossless compression, then it is actually a good thing. It means that we can save space while at the same time enjoy the benefit of a lossless compression without sacrificing any information that's captured in the raw file. 
And finally, interesting fact number five, Olympus is being very, very conservative when they make claims about the Olympus OMD system. This has been true since the beginning of the Micro Four Thirds system. Take a look at the Olympus EP1. The autofocus was painfully slow. However, when the autofocus successfully locks an image, the focus accuracy is almost always spot on. Olympus prioritized the focus accuracy over speed. However, in comparison to the peer from Panasonic, which released the first ever micro photos camera to the world, the Panasonic G1, the autofocus was almost twice as fast in comparison to the EP1, but it also misses focus a lot more. Fast forward to the present days, Olympus has been claiming that the high resolution shot while they are able to produce 80 megapixel RAW files, I've talked about this in my recent videos. If you want to find out how the Olympus 80 megapixel high resolution shot works, I've made a video here recently. Please check out the video. I'll put the link up here. Basically, Olympus was very honest and they mentioned very, very clearly that the quality that's achieved by the high res shot is closer to the 50 megapixel resolution. Using this method of pixel shift technology by moving the image sensor eight times and combining all the images into one, they were able to create 80 megapixel RAW files, but they don't claim that the image quality is 80 megapixels. They claim that it is closer to a true 50 megapixel sensor. Other companies who actually use similar technology actually claim that by using this same method, they can achieve full resolution that is captured in the RAW file. This is also similarly true when it comes to Olympus claims of the other specifications such as the 5 axis image stabilization having 5.5 stop stabilization effectiveness. We all know that using wide angle lens on Olympus E1 Mark II or E1X, we can hand hold down to 5 seconds and some people who don't drink coffee, unfortunately I drink a lot of coffee, if you don't drink coffee and you have steady hands, you can hand hold to 8 seconds, 10 seconds or beyond. That is actually a lot more than six or seven stuff of stabilization that Olympus has claimed. Being very conservative when it comes to claiming specifications for the Olympus only camera is both a good and bad thing for the company. It is very good for us because Olympus is very transparent. They don't overhype and oversell their products. It is what it is. And when we use the cameras and we look at the specifications, we are rarely disappointed because it always exceeds what Olympus originally claimed. However, at the same time, it is also bad for the company because they could have convinced a lot of other photographers to switch over to Olympus because the camera is in fact better than what they actually claim on the paper specification. Nevertheless, I appreciate that Olympus has always been honest and been transparent with what they claim that the camera can do. And I have always been left impressed and amazed by the images that I'm able to capture with Olympus OMD cameras. I think that is a very positive characteristics of the Olympus company. And I do hope that they continue to stay on this path. Hey, that's all the facts that I have to share in this video. Do let me know how many of these interesting facts you already know and how many of them you have actually heard for the first time. I'm not surprised that many of you already know all of the facts. Do let me know in the comments below. Do you have any other interesting facts to share? Do share with everyone else. I would love to learn more about the Olympus OMD system as well. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel and I will definitely produce a lot more content coming this way. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.